the largest river on earth is not on land. It carries more water than all the rivers on earth combined. It is an absolutely massive river, and it's in the ocean. It starts in the Pacific, just to pick an arbitrary starting point. It's actually a continuous loop. It's, it's called the Great Conveyor Belt. It's a continuous loop. But let's just start in the Pacific, about halfway between Hawaii and, and the Philippines, in the warm waters of the Pacific. There, there is this uh, stream of warm water that starts flowing south, uh, goes under, under the southern tip of, of South Africa, and then crosses the Atlantic, uh, grazing the coast of Brazil, and comes up through the Gulf of Mexico, floats around the edge of Florida, runs up the eastern seaboard of the United States. Uh, we call it the Gulf Stream, that little part of it we call the Gulf Stream. And then somewhere in the mid-Atlantic seaboard, or maybe just a little north of New York, it heads off to the east toward England, and just off the coast, the southern coast of Greenland and the western coast of England, maybe a, a few hundred miles out to sea, it, it uh, hits the point where the waters from the Arctic are so cold and the fresh water coming off uh, the, the, uh, the, the water melt from, from Greenland is so lacking in salt that it settles to the bottom of the ocean belt. So as I was saying, there's, there's this river of water that runs from the warm Pacific under uh, South Africa up through the Atlantic all the way up off the coast of England. And then it settles when it, when it, when it gets up to the uh, off the coast of England and off the coast of, of Greenland or, you know, in the Atlantic waters in that neighborhood. It hits cold water. So this warm water loses its, its heat. It, it's continuously losing heat into the atmosphere anyway. And it loses the last, you know, there's a, a tipping point hit where the last of its heat goes into the atmosphere at that point and, uh, and, and it also is commingled with colder water coming down from the north. And the water and this giant river settles to the bottom of the Atlantic. And then it begins the same track or a similar track back around the southern tip of South Africa, back out to the Pacific, where it continues so it's, it's it's like a mobius strip it's a continuous loop it's continually flowing and bringing that warmth from the pacific all the way up and and it gathers more warmth as it goes through the uh, uh, through the equator uh between the gulf of uh, the tropic of cancer and capricorn as it continue as it does that releasing that heat into the air off you know a couple hundred miles west of of europe basically is the reason why Europe, particularly Northern Europe, which is at a latitude of, uh, you know, similar to Alaska, it's why they have a climate that's similar to, you know, Washington, D.C. Or, or Michigan, where I grew up, rather than a climate of permafrost and stunted trees and, and glaciers, is because of the heat coming out of this, it's called the Great the Atlantic Conveyor Belt, uh, or the... Uh, there's actually a, an official name for it, and uh, the, the, this, this Atlantic circulation. And uh, it's called the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, or AMOC. Now, we've known for some years, for some decades, that if this current stops, that Europe gets thrown into an ice age. Even if the entire planet's warming. Europe could be thrown into an ice age if this current stops because it's just such a northern latitude. This was published in the Washington Post yesterday. It's based on an article that was published in Climate Change a few months ago. Michael Mann was one of the authors of it. He's a friend of this show. Uh, I want to get him on to talk about this. But they are doing satellite mapping from outer space of the temperatures of the planet. And what they found is that while every place on the planet is warmer now, there is one spot that's actually colder now, and it's just south of Greenland, just west of England. It's where that great river of water settles from the surface to the bottom. Why would it be colder? Apparently, it is slowing down, this great conveyor belt. 
And uh, the, this is what Michael Mann said to the author of the uh, New York or of the Washington Post piece. He said, "I was formerly skeptical about the notion that the ocean conveyor belt circulation pattern could weaken in response to global warming. Yet this now appears to be underway, as we showed in a recent article, and as we now appear to be witnessing before our very eyes in the form of an anomalous blob of cold water in the subpolar North Atlantic." I encourage you to check out this article, Why Some Scientists Are Worried About a Surprisingly Cold Blob in the North Atlantic Ocean. The best guess is, if this thing shuts down altogether, three years. This is the Tom Hartman Program. If this thing shuts down altogether, Europe has about three years before the Ice Age starts to set in. We'll see. As I said, they made a movie out of it. It's called The Day After Tomorrow. <laughs> 